Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Chevy Equinox, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Roadmaster Smart Diode Wiring Kit. But before we do that, why don't we check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. So before we get too carried away and start talking about the diode wiring kit, why don't we just kind of refresh yourselves and touch base on the five main components that we're gonna to need to flat tail our Equinox down the road in the first place. Usually we like to have everything hook up to the motor home and really have a good visual on all those components that we're gonna need. But today due to unforeseen uh, circumstances, we're not able to do that. So just kind of bear with us here and uh, we're, we're kind of making do and, and trying our best. But like I said, there's gonna be five parts. Uh, one of them is the base plate, and that's going to provide us with a solid and reliable attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. And the tow bar is gonna be that second component, and that's gonna be the physical link that actually connects to the front of our Chevy and runs up to the back of our motorhome. The third main component will be safety cables, and those are just gonna connect to your base plate and to your motorhome's hitch. And that's just going to uh, kind of be a safety device uh, in case you have an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main component will be tow bar wiring. And what this is gonna do is transfer the lighting functions from the back of your motorhome to the back of your SUV, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component will be a supplemental braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your Equinox whenever you hit the brakes in your coach, helping bring you to a more complete and predictable stop. But with that out of the way, let's talk about how this works. So, uh, you know, whenever you're hooked up to your RV and you turn on your lights, that signal will be sent back here. So uh, right now I'm just hooked up to a test box uh, that's kind of simulating an RV just so we can actually see something. But say if you're in your RV, Turn your left blinker on, this will come on. Your right blinker, that one will come on, and then you also get your tail lights as well as your brake lights. So you kind of have all your bases covered there. Uh, when it comes to picking out wiring uh, uh, to get this job done, the diode kit is one that I always recommend, and that's really because it's a permanent type install. Um, it looks factory once it's in place and they seem to be really reliable. We do a lot of these and rarely run into issues with them. Um, as opposed to, let's say, magnetic lighting, for example. Um, those are a wiring kit that have lights that are on magnets that you stick onto the roof of your car, and then you gotta run wires all the way up and plug it into your motor home, and it's just kind of a pain. You know, you obviously dealing with that, and then you gotta store a big bundle of wires and lights, and as we know, when you're over the road storage, uh, you can never get enough of it. So uh, with a setup like this, you're not gonna have to worry about it, and it's more or less uh, just gonna get the job done. With this particular kit, this is gonna work with those Equinoxes that have the incandescent type bulbs, so kind of just your classic automotive light bulb. Um, if your Equinox has LEDs, there's a kit designed for them as well. I think some of the premier models uh, might come with that. So that's always an option for you as well. And something that's pretty cool with the smart diodes is uh, there's a couple things really about them. One of them, they're quite a bit smaller than the standard diode kit, uh, which is good because you don't have a ton of space back here. So a little bit smaller and there's only one diode per side, as opposed to the standard kit where you're gonna have two diodes per side. So takes up more space and then obviously you gotta have more connections and more stuff going on. Um, that's you know more than likely uh, uh, over these to have something come loose or, or run into any of those type of issues. Which kind of brings me to my next point. Whenever you put these on and install them, you're only gonna have to, to tap into one factory wire. So really straightforward, it's really hard to mess up and you know anything that you can do to uh, eliminate a potential failure is definitely a step in the right direction and so i really think they get a, did a good job uh, with the design of the smart diode so here up front whenever you're ready to actually hook up to your motor home all you're going to have to do is take the uh, cable that comes from 
the back of the motorhome seven way and plug it right right on in and that's really all there is to it you don't have to set anything up or bother with anything else i something i do want to mention though i'll get this out of the way is the kit is not going to come included with this six-way round connector um, so you will have to get it separately but think about too if you're buying a whole package let's say if you're getting a tow bar and everything as well and let's say for example i know right off the top of my head the roadmaster nighthawk it'll actually come with the connector and it'll come with a, a umbilical like this as well so think about the whole package you know um, if not if your tow bar doesn't come with one or you need one you can always grab this separately not really a big deal um, and you'll also need a connector cable like this too so um, this particular one is a straight cable so six way round to a seven way round on one end and think about these too if your tow bar has channels that run along the side of it you'll want the straight one or a, there's a hybrid one as well that's straight and then at the end has some coils in it if your tow bar doesn't have those channels to run wires through you want the coiled type cable and there's several different options in terms of you know six way round on one end to a, a seven way on the other and so on so uh, uh, Put everything together accordingly and um, you know we'll definitely have an option for you other than that though at the end of the day uh, i mean a kit that's gonna get the job done and like i said we've had a lot of luck with them in the past so really can't ask for too much more as far as the install goes um, really not bad it's it's not confusing per se more or less time consuming just having to run wires and everything but something you only have to do one time and then it's done so as long as you stay focused, you really shouldn't run into too many issues. But speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and uh, hook everything up together now. To begin our wiring installation, we're going to be here at the front of our vehicle. And clearly we have the front fascia removed, and that's because we're doing this at the same time that we're doing our base plate, uh, which I suggest doing. makes it a lot easier. But first thing we want to do is take the end of our wires here and... Uh, you know, place them over here where our bracket is and get our connector hooked up. Now this red wire, in case you're wondering, this isn't part of the diode kit. Uh, this is actually what's called a charge line. And since we have to run these wires up, uh, you know, might as well do this one at the same time and, and save us a uh, little bit of time there. So that's what that is, in case you're wondering. But for the diodes, we're gonna have this, right? And what we wanna do is very carefully cut in between and then peel these apart a little bit and we're going to strip back the ends of the insulation about something like this and then give these a good twist and I'll just do that same thing for our remaining wires here with the wires twisted like that we're going to take our dust cover and slide that over all our wires. I'm just gonna push that out of the way for now. And then we can grab our connector plug. So if you look on the back of it where the terminals are, there's gonna be set screws in there. And you wanna back the set screw out with a small Phillips screwdriver pretty much all the way. You don't wanna pull it all the way out though because if you do, these are kind of a pain to get back in and they're easy to lose. But they're gonna be labeled so we're going to be working with this one here. That's labeled TM for tail light. So the brown wire go to it, will go to it. This one is labeled GD for ground. So the white wire will go to it. This one is labeled LT for left turn. So the yellow wire will go into there. And then this one will be RT for right turn. So the green wire will go into it. So we'll take the appropriate wire color. So we'll just start with our tail light which is brown. We're going to place the bearing of the wire into the terminal and then just tighten down the set screw. And so I'll do the same thing for our remaining wires. Here's what all the wires look like uh, in the back of our connector plug here. And what I'll do now is I'll hook up our charge line wire uh, to the back of this as well. And then we can secure this and start to route 
uh, our wires back. Now that we're hooked up, we can take our rubber boot, put it back over our six-way connector, and you can apply um, dielectric grease and sealer and stuff to the terminals inside there and tape everything up to keep moisture out. I like to wait to the very end of the flat toe setup though to do that just so we can make sure everything's working and stuff. That way if it's not, it's not a big mess in here. But for now, we'll go ahead and just mount this up to our base plate. And then the wiring is gonna get routed uh, inside of the engine compartment. So just ran it along through here and up where it comes in, uh, essentially kind of right underneath our headlight. The diode wiring comes right up into the engine compartment up through here and we got to get it to the bottom side of our car. So I just ran it along through here, kind of straight back and dropped it uh, right down uh, the firewall to the bottom side of our Equinox. Now underneath the vehicle, our wiring comes down right along all of our factory brake lines. And um, you know, when you're routing wiring, make sure to do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts and use zip ties along the way to keep everything secure. But our wiring just runs along through here. Uh, you might have some type of panel or something here uh, blocking all this. If you do, usually there's some uh, nuts that you can pull off to drop that down out of the way. But once we get to about this point, what I did was just take our white wire and just separate it from the rest of the strand. And this is going to need to be grounded. And so I'm thinking probably right here in this area will be pretty good. So I'm going to cut the white wire. And then we can strip back the insulation on it. And then we'll take one of the ring terminals, slide that on, and crimp it down. Then we can use one of the self-tapping screws to secure it onto the body of our vehicle here. With that done though, we can continue to route our wires. So I just continued along following our factory lines. Right up through here. Along the side of our gas tank. And then it goes up and over our subframe. where it drops down right here. Right, about when we get to this point, you can separate the ends of the wires again. And the brown wire, you're going to cut in half, about right here probably. In one end, you'll strip the insulation back. And I'll double this one over, a little bit thicker. And you're going to take um, a butt connector. And actually, now that I'm thinking of it, we'll straighten this one out. This will be a little bit easier to route. And then you can take the piece of white wire that we had left over from our ground, strip that end back, and you're going to twist these ends together. Butt connector goes over both ends and gets crimped down. I'm using a heat shrink butt connector. It just helps protect against corrosion and stuff a little bit better. The one that comes with the kit will work just fine, but if you'd rather upgrade to this, you always can get it here at each trailer. And then this end, this end will double over. So we'll twist it. I'm just doing that because this butt connector is pretty big and the wire will fit in there better. Crimp that down. And with this being a heat shrink, 
come back with my heat source and seal up the ends. What I've done now is just let our brown and yellow wire kind of hang here, and that's because this will eventually get routed up on the driver's side behind the tail light uh, there. And then our white and green wire I ran over to the passenger side, so I just brought it along through here, and I actually ran it through the hole in our bumper beam. So I pushed it in, where it comes all the way out on the other side. And now we can just let the green and white wire hang for now. And this will get eventually routed up to the taillight pocket on the passenger side. Now we can get our taillights removed. That way we can get our wires up here and everything. So you're gonna have these caps. You can pop them out. You just take a small screwdriver or something, kind of pry behind there. And that's going to uh, expose a P15 Torx bit screw. Pull these on out. And we should be able to kind of work our tail light straight back. And uh, sometimes these can get hung up and just make sure you pull straight back and try to maneuver it uh, a little bit at a time. You don't want to get too crazy cranking on it because you might break it. But now with that said, we'll go ahead and remove our connectors. So this would be a tab. Push down on the middle of the tab, that'll separate it. Same thing for that one there. And now we can do the same thing on the other side of our vehicle and set our tail lights off to the side. So what I've done is grabbed our wiring and pulled it up through the opening in our tail light pocket and then cut it to length, maybe about a foot to work with, strip back the ends of the insulation and then I just crimped on uh, the terminals here, just like how we did the ground wire when we crimped that terminal on. Then this big clip here, you can peel the tape off and you're looking for the brake light signal. So I checked it and it's on the driver's side here, the yellow wire with the blue stripe. So what you're going to do is cut that about in half. You don't have a ton of wire to work with here. so. But both ends of this insulation are going to get stripped back as well. And be careful, be kind of gentle with this wiring. It's pretty thin. So both of those are going to receive our terminals. down. Not a bad idea either, especially for these real skinny wires. Whenever you crimp this, crimp these on to uh, kind of lightly pull back on it. I mean, you don't have to rip it apart, but just a, a light tug there to make sure it's seated good. And what we're going to do is grab our diode now, and <clears throat> if we look, this side will say car brake out. That's going to get plugged in right there. Car brake in will get plugged in there. And then our new wiring, I'll kind of tuck this down here. Our new wiring, the RV tail will be the brown wire and the RV brake will be our yellow wire and that'll leave us with one more uh, to get hooked up here and so I already made and put the wire together um, they give you these little pieces of white wire one end you crimp on terminal other end crimp on a ring terminal so that'll go to ground and then I'll come back. Uh, I need to grab my, my screw here, but uh, I'll grab that and then we can come back and ground this out to the body of our vehicle. I think I'm just gonna go right here in this area. It's kind of out of the way. So self-tapping screw, we'll secure it down.
With everything hooked up, we can get our tail light plugged back in and reinstalled. I do want to mention, <clears throat> just for a little extra added peace of mind and security, knowing these things aren't going to come out, I did put some RTV silicone there just to help kind of glue them in place, I guess you could say, because sometimes these can wiggle loose. You know, you put some miles on the car and everything. So that'll just help them keep, keep secure, especially since we really can't mount this up in a great spot. It'll just be kind of jammed in there, but I'll go ahead and plug our tail light connectors back in. And carefully reinstall the light. Over here on the passenger side, essentially we set this up the exact same way. Really the only difference being the color of the wires. So RV brake, you're going to put your new green wire into it. RV tail, you're going to put your new white wire into it. Car brake in, that's the factory brown wire with a green stripe. And obviously car brake out, that same color wire, you just hook it up to the side closer to the connector. And then our ground. So just like the other side, they gave you a little piece of wire, hook it up, screw it down where we uh, did the other one. Again, I put my silicone there, and now we'll just uh, plug this back in and resecure it. Now we can test our wiring to make sure it's working properly. So I just hooked up to a test box, which simulates a motorhome. You can just use your motorhome, but keep in mind if your motorhome has issues, then that could translate back to your vehicle. But that said, uh, we'll turn on our tail lights, our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and our brake lights. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster Smart Diode Wiring Kit on our 2022 Chevrolet Equinox.